Now we're going to take a quick look at the process of learning how to coach. Now these stages, there are five of them, they kind of get intermingled and you keep going back and forth between them, but they're, they're definitely there and they're worth taking a look at. The first one is your knowledge of the game. Now for the average parent coach that maybe never played, their knowledge comes primarily through theoretical knowledge. They go to some coaching courses, some clinics, get some books, DVDs, what they pick up from other people, and that's a good place to start. A little bit of theoretical knowledge, thinking about the game, asking yourself why are things organized this way, what are we trying to achieve, and so on. The other area for knowledge of the game is practical experience. Now this is where people who have played the game have a distinct advantage. They understand the emotional uh, feeling of when, as a defender, you check into a space and the ball is played into the space that you just left. They understand the situation where you just are a hair shade too late releasing the ball. And these are the kind of things that you understand as a player, now you're trying to coach. So it gets you a little bit better empathy in terms of the players. Both areas you need to work on. Even if you've never played before, Go out and play some small-sided games yourself. Even if it's just knocking a ball against a wall, what does that feel like? How does the ball behave? How does it act? What's it like trying to control a ball? Play some little 3v3s, 4 versus 4 and understand how the game unfolds. Learn that way. If you're an experienced player or someone who has a background in coaching, learn about the game. Read some books, read some, uh, look at DVDs, the internet, things like that. and broaden your understanding of the game. Finally, as far as knowledge of the game is concerned, you need to coach soccer, not something else. If you're going to learn how to coach soccer and to be a soccer coach, don't spend your time, as little as you may have, having your players dribble through these cones, doing exercises, a lot of static stretches, a lot of jogging. Get out, get them involved, get them playing, as quickly as possible within a safe environment and then coach them playing soccer. Not only does that make them a better player, but it will make you a better coach a lot quicker. Now the next area we're going to look at is reading the game. This is where you have to diagnose what's, what's actually happening. This is where as a doctor you have to look at the patient and figure out what's going wrong. What do I need to work at? And in this sense, you're going to have two different areas that you're going to be doing this diagnosis in. One is going to be at practices, and the other is going to be doing during a game. Now, there's some similarities and differences there, and that's what we're going to take a look at. At practices, you want to keep as close as possible to the video that's what is soccer. Keep in mind the elements of the game, the main moments, the field, the goals, the direction, all of that type of thing, that the players have tasks, they understand their tasks. The reason it practices is that if you do that, you're reading something that's valid and in the context of the game itself. If you watch kids running around the field, jogging around the field, you say, well, I'm watching their soccer fitness. No, maybe that's you're watching them get ready for cross country, but that has nothing to do with soccer fitness. Or you're watching kids out in the middle of the field and there's 18, 19 of them, and they're all juggling the soccer ball. I say, well, I'm watching them develop their first touch. Uh, well, first touch for what? Cirque du Soleil? You know, it really doesn't have anything to do with soccer. So that's something to keep in mind in terms of the practices. Now, in terms of games, reading the game in games, we have those, uh, the video on actually reading the game. So look at that and it will give you some structure there of starting with the main moments and then working down through a series of questions to get at what you're going to need to get at on these next ones of objectives and priorities. A couple of things here, no matter whether it's at practices or games, you need to be able to see and hear what is taking place. You need to be in physical positions where you have the group within sight where you can see what's happening without getting so close that you lose players behind you. Uh, another thing that you see here is that 
this gets to be like uh, coaches or cameras or projectors. Some coaches come out there and they're already preloaded. They they know what they're going to see. They don't need to to have any any observation of the kids because they're a projector. They've read this book. They know that with this professional club, their U16s, they do these exercises and they can do them within these dimensions. And I know that my U10s here on this bumpy field are going to play just like those guys. As a projector, you're going to put an image that may not be there. You need to be a camera. You need to back away from the emotional context and actually observe what is going on. And it's an important distinction. It's something that maybe you take a look at, watch other coaches working, and see what you observe from there. Another thing here is how many players can you keep track of? I'll tell you how many times I've been out to fields and I watch a team warming up with a roster 10 or 12 and one kid's dribbling up at the goal and they shoot at the goal. Eight kids are in line, horsing around, and the coach is watching the one kid dribble up and shoot while one other kid's out in the woods somewhere retrieving a ball or you have a goalkeeper. That's, that's not working. You need to know where everybody is as much of the time as possible. So this goes back to seeing what is going on, being where you can see. Be aware that you need to observe all of the kids and that that's going to take a lot of practice. Those parent, If you're a parent coach and you're coaching 7 versus 7 or 8 versus 8, it gets very confusing, very confusing, because you're, you have to watch all 14 kids or 16 kids, not just your own, but the other kids. You need to know what's going on to be able to pick things out and not just focus on the one. So it goes back to learning how to coach, reduce the game to manageable bite-sized pieces, 4 versus 4, 7, or 3 versus 3 in your practices. Learn how to read that and work from there. Thank you.